Support WrestleTalk! Donate on Patreon. We are through the looking glass here, people, because some people genuinely think that WWE and Roman Reigns faked cancer just to get sympathy. Yeah, and he's probably an alien lizard person too. Maybe he just had space cancer. Maybe that's actually good for you. Maybe the Earth is flat. Or we just all feel deflated and slightly unsurprised that this nonsense is actually happening. What I'm trying to say is, what the actual fuck? But seriously, Let's take stock of the facts. Roman Reigns returned to Raw this week and announced that his leukemia, which he's been out having treatment for since October, is in remission. It was an amazing emotional segment, and I think most people agree that it's actually great to see the big dog back, who himself looked overwhelmed by the response he got from the crowd, probably because for the first time ever, nobody booed. Roman was even in an angle on the night and threw out some Superman punches and a spear, which was great to see because People were skeptical, me included, before the show The WWE had rushed him back before he was ready in an effort to boost those flagging ratings. Because, to be honest, it seems like something they might do. I don't usually miss the chance to turn a tragedy into an angle. That kind of big box office thinking brought us Jim the Table Nightheart. And it also already came into play in the Roman Reigns story. Dean Ambrose said that Reigns deserved his illness because of his actions in The Shield. And even on Monday, Baron Corbin suggesting that being GM was harder than having leukemia. But that is an entirely different skepticism. The notion that WWE might drag Roman back before he's ready just to sell tickets and get eyes on the product up to the skepticism of him ever having cancer in the first place. Because surely the notion that the entire thing was just a work to get sympathy for Roman Reigns is preposterous red-faced raving of Alex Jones proportions. So I think some of this comes from misinformation about leukemia, and some of this comes out of not liking the way that WWE packaged Reigns before his diagnosis. After all, they did feed just about everyone to Roman in order to get him over. Even Triple H was pedigree chum for the big dog. But really, we've got to debunk some of this guff, because no matter how much you dislike Roman the character, saying it's a work does a disservice to Joe, the man who just beat cancer and came straight back to work. Cancer patients don't all look the same. Now, a common thread among the conspiracy theorists is that Roman doesn't look the part of a cancer survivor. But he looks the same as he did before. Why has he still got hair? There's no way he recovered that quickly. Cancer patients don't all look the same. Even Hollywood, which presents a very stereotyped vision of cancer, thinking extreme weight loss, complete hair loss, even they go from that to Deadpool. There are small differences there, but they are important differences. Over in the real world, there are myriad treatments for cancer, and every patient will have different reactions to those treatments. Just because one person has one reaction to cancer treatment, it doesn't mean the next person will react in the exact same way. Just like when you get a cold, you might get a blocked nose, and the person who catches your cold gets a runny nose, and quite cross that you even came into work when you were ill, Brenda. Everyone reacts differently to different illnesses. Because some people can undergo chemo and come out of it with a full head of hair looking just like they did before. For a personal example, early last year, my dad was diagnosed with lymphoma and had to have a course of chemotherapy. Now, he lost a bit of weight, but he never said he actually felt sick apart from right after a chemo session. In fact, it actually took so much effort to just keep him inside and stop him going out where all the germs are because he just kept trying to go for runs the whole time because he felt so good. And he's in remission now and his hair, which only thinned really, has grown back thicker than before, which I am super cross about. But I know that we were lucky and that some people's experiences of cancer can be far worse. And in Roman's case too, it looks like he was lucky to have had positive reactions to treatment. Personal trainer David Gonya, who posted a pic with Roman training for his in-ring return, called it a flare-up. So maybe it just wasn't that severe, meaning that an athlete at the peak of physical well-being would have had a much quicker return to his usual physique. There are also four different kinds of leukemia. Without going into all of the science around it, they all affect the body in different ways and are treated in different ways too. And as we don't know which form of leukemia Roman had, we can't actually know for certain what way his body is even supposed to react. The long and the short of it is that you don't have to look sick to be sick. It's kind of weird that people seem to think that cancer patients have to perform having cancer to even make it believable. It's not wrestling. He doesn't have to sell the disease. And maybe that's it. Maybe because we haven't wheeled Roman out in an over-the-top wrestling style like Becky Lynch overselling that leg, people just refuse to believe that something could happen off our screens and off of social media, and he could come back in just five months pretty much looking the same.
Remission doesn't mean he's cured. Now here's the ultimate caveat with cancer. Being in remission doesn't mean that the threat of cancer is over. As he mentioned when he announced he would be leaving for treatment back in October last year, he has had leukemia before and undergone successful treatment. But as we can see, just because it went away, that doesn't mean that it can't come back again. But it also importantly means that all of the time that Roman had been working in WWE before, he was in remission. Now, despite the fact that the cancer is in remission, Roman will still have to have very regular checkups as there is still a big risk that the disease will return in the months and years following treatment. The same could be said for all cancers. My dad currently has an appointment every three months to check that he's still in remission. And over time, the intervals will extend and extend and then eventually, fingers crossed, he might not have to have checkups at all. Chris Griffin, who is also a leukemia survivor, wrote a blog post about people labelling Roman's cancer as a work and pointed out that during his treatment, although he didn't always feel 100% healthy, his leukemia never forced him to take a day out of work. Chris has a type of leukemia that is treated by pills. So once again, there are different kinds of leukemia and we mustn't assume that they're all treated in the same way. Writing in the blog post, he said, Roman is an elite athlete. And it might surprise you that I'm not. We've both fought our leukemia in our own way and in our own time frame. But there is one thing that I guarantee will annoy any leukemia patient who is in remission. That's someone saying, well, you don't look sick. Right now, that's happening online. Can't we celebrate Roman looking great and happy? Or would we prefer him hooked up to a drip, pushed out in a wheelchair? That's our traditional view. And if our traditional view has been upended, it isn't a lie. Because I guess the important point here of being in remission is that the cancer has gone away. You start to get back to normal because the cells that were damaging you are no longer present in your body. And what would the point of this work be? I mean, honestly, there are literally thousands of other ways of getting sympathy for someone in the world of wrestling. And yes, we've tried a few with Roman before that didn't exactly work out. He's had friends turning on him, dastardly authority figures screwing him over, snatched titles from right out under his nose, The Rock. And yeah, they didn't exactly work. But you know what started to win people round? Finally taking the Universal title off of that old work-shy Brock Lesnar, giving a title shot to Finn Balor, reigning and importantly, defending on Raw. And given more time with a bell, I'm sure that Roman would have won the vast majority of the audience over just by being champion and being present. There's no need to pretend that someone has a life-threatening disease. As Kayfabe News put it better than I ever could, while fans of sports entertainment rejoiced at Roman Reigns' emotional statement on WWE Raw this week that his leukemia is in remission, the real story is that Roman's so-called cancer is just scripted work, according to a report published today by a nitwit on the internet. These allegations, if true, which they are clearly not, could cause a serious scandal for WWE, which they won't because the allegations are preposterous. If for no other reasons than WWE's long-standing partnership with the Susan G. Komen Foundation and its leadership of Connor's Cure. But there are so many other reasons. So many. Now, far from suggesting that WWE hasn't used unpleasant tactics in the past to get someone over, but there's a difference between, say, Katie Vick and this. This is not a gimped up hunt to get him frisky with a cadaver. This is serious. And thankfully, it seems Roman has thus far responded very well to treatment. And according to Fightful, it was him that made the call to return to the ring early, not anyone else inside WWE. So if he feels in himself that he's ready to return, then who are we to question it? Also, if it was a work, surely someone would have noticed. In the modern world where nothing is secret and nobody can fart without it ending up on Snapchat, do you really think that no one would have noticed if Roman Reigns had never undergone treatment for leukemia? If the man was just sitting at home playing Mario Kart all day while waiting just long enough to get some sympathy, someone surely would have noticed. The kids on online multiplayer could have dobbed him in. Because his announcement was arguably one of the biggest in wrestling history and easily one of the most publicized. So naturally wrestling media, and in this case the regular media, would be all over this story like a rash. Not a single reliable source has reported anything other than the fact that the leukemia is 100% genuine. And that is because it is. Because we can all go on Twitter and cry fake news but without actual evidence. This is all just a conspiracy theory and it's one that is distracting us from the real important questions surrounding wrestling today. Who threw the pie at Kevin Owens? And what about WWE's connection to cancer charities? Because WWE has very close connections with two cancer charities, Connor's Cure and the Susan G. Komen Foundation. And although some of the practices of the latter have come into question recently, it would be PR suicide to fake 
break a cancer angle with such close links to these kinds of charities. In fact, it was WWE who created the Connor's Cure charity after Connor Michalik, a young superfan who was battling both spine and brain cancer, lost his battle with the disease in 2014. And WWE makes a huge deal out of these partnerships with both charities. And to throw that away, just to get a bit of sympathy for a wrestler, is not only incredibly stupid, it's really incredibly unlikely. Because if it was just a work and that news somehow got out, the backlash against it would hang over all of the good work WWE did with these charities forever. And that's not something you're likely to risk. To sum up, being on the internet and wrapped up in the is it a shoot, is it a work world of wrestling does mean that yes, you can get a little distrusting of facts as they are presented to you. And yeah, you can take that little bit of doubt and you can run with it until you're all the way down the line somewhere going, this is Wrestlegate and I am Deep Throat. But if you don't do your research, you're just sloppy. Thank you for watching and thank you to all of the names scrolling down below me who are our lovely pledge hammers on Patreon. You lot are the best, the literal best. Now, if you direct your attention over there, you will see an article from the brilliant WrestleTalk website about 15 really flipping terrible wrestling t-shirts. Some of them are oozing machismo. Gross. I've been El Fakador and that was Lucha.